Hey everyone! In today's video, I want to talk to you about four main aspects in relation to glue and paper quilling. So first I want to speak about the glue that I use. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the containers in which I keep my glue in order to apply it easier. Thirdly, I'm going to speak about methods to apply glue. And fourthly, I'm going to talk about how to fix glue stains. So if you will find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's get to it. So first things first, let me say a few words about the glue. The glue that I use in most of my quilling projects comes from the brand called Beak. I usually buy it from the craft section or school section of stores like supermarkets. It's a white glue and it's ideal for wood and paper. So there are two main things that I like to uh, find in a glue and that I seek for in a glue. First, I look for a glue that becomes transparent after it dries. And secondly, I look for a glue that uh, um, isn't shiny after it dries. So these are the two main aspects that I uh, look for. This is the glue that I've been using for the past five years or so and you'll probably see me using it in most of my videos here on YouTube. Another glue that I use now and then, I guess not as often as the previous one, is actually a combination of three elements, uh, water, glue and alcohol 70% volume. Um, and uh, this mixture, when you apply it on your quilling elements, it helps them to become more sturdy and uh, to dry faster. So yeah, you'll probably see it in the description of my videos where I use it. And I found this recipe of glue from another fellow quiller on YouTube, Bridget's Creativity. I also use this stronger glue called Loctite whenever I glue my quilling flowers, such as these. Now let me speak a few words about the containers that I use in order to store my glue. So I like to use these uh, plastic containers which hold about 20 milliliters of glue. I also like using them because they're smaller in size than the glue bottle and uh, it's easier to handle them with your hands when you're working. And they also have a smaller applicator at the top from which the glue pours out, so it's easier to work with. You can see that it has a lid at the top that you can remove and uh, refill your container whenever it uh, becomes empty. I've also recently bought another container which is similar to the previous one. The only difference is that it has a finer tip at the top. So this one is, uh, the tip is uh, 0.6 millimeters wide and uh, my previous one was one millimeter in size in, at the top. I've been working with this one for the past one or two weeks and I find that it's easier to work with uh, in some of my quilling projects because it has a finer tip and uh, it's easier to get to some areas that are smaller in size and uh, where you need to apply less glue. So I'm probably going to use both this one and the previous one for my future projects. You can also see that it has a needle that comes out from the applicator once you take the lid off. And that needle helps the glue to not get clogged inside the fine tip. So that's a really important point for me because with my previous one I would use a needle that I had around the house to unclog the glue every time it got uh, uh, it dried inside there. So this is the way I fill and refill my glue containers. This was my first time trying this fine tip applicator and I really like how it made those straight, very narrow lines. Now let's talk about methods of applying glue. One of my main methods is just to put some glue on a thick piece of paper and start to 
dabbing my elements into that glue and gluing them on my desired surface. The important thing is to touch the glue lightly with your quilling piece and not drown it in glue, but if uh, you happen to make such mistake like we all do sometimes and you end up having too much glue, the first thing I do is I immediately start trying to remove that excess glue with my quilling needle or with another paper strip that I have around. So like I said, it's important to remove that glue while it's still wet because otherwise it will be harder later. Basically that's all that I do and once that area, that little bit of glue that you still have left dries, um, it really becomes invisible and clean all around, like you can see here on my uh, example. Another method that I use is just to apply glue directly to my quilling piece with my glue container, like you see me doing here. If you find that too much glue came out of your applicator, just use your quilling needle to remove some of it. Then I like to use my tweezers to help me glue it to my base card. And again, you can use the quilling needle to remove any excess glue. If you find that you used too much glue, you can also dab that quilling piece to a draft paper to remove the excess glue and then glue it to your base paper card. Another method is to use your fine applicator and directly put glue on your card base and then uh, stick your quilling pieces on that glue. You can see that here I'm using another paper strip to remove the excess glue. And one last method is to use your paintbrush to spread the glue on your paper quilling pieces. Now, the way I fix glue stains is that I either remove it uh, quickly when it's still wet or I leave it dry and remove it afterwards, like you'll see me doing here, in my example. So let's say you have a glue stain on top of one of your quilling pieces that you haven't been able to remove uh, right then when, it, when the glue was still wet. What I do is that after it has completely dried, I use a paper cutter that has a blunt blade and start gently trying to remove that dry glue off my quilling piece. Of course, the best thing to do is to avoid such things and always be careful to use less glue. But this is what I personally do when I ever happen to have such crisis moments. And afterwards, I add just a little bit of water to smoothen that area out and let it dry. But like I said before, I do my best to avoid these situations because they're very uncomfortable. Now and then, I also add a very thin layer of glue on the affected area because this helps it to dry in a smoother way. So here is how it all turned out after drying. Thank you for watching this video guys! I hope that it was informative and that it could help you in any way in your journey with paper quilling. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and if you would like to see more such videos. And uh, yeah, see you in my next one!